So next up at our look at the different respiratory structures seen in organisms, we're going to now begin looking at gills, and this will be part one of two. So this will be entitled Gills 1. As we're going through this, take a look at figure 42.22 to get a good structural and functional understanding of how gills work. So to begin, let's introduce this concept of this respiratory structure by stating that gills are going to represent themselves as the most common. It's the most common respiratory structure that's within multicellular aquatic organisms. So we'll write that down. In multicellular aquatic organisms. So most things that live underwater are going to utilize gills for respiration. That will be their primary respiratory structure. Now, the reason why gills are so good at doing respiration, at being a respiratory structure, is because they are very much specialized structures. They're very differentiated and specifically designed and adapted for gas exchange. But the, the real important part of this is that this is going to be gas exchange that occurs in water. That's the key here. In water, you have aquatic organisms, therefore you need gas exchange that works effectively within a water environment. And in order to do that, gills themselves will be characterized by, structurally speaking, something known as evaginated exchange surfaces. That's really three words to describe how a gill generally is going to work. It's an evaginated exchange surface found within aquatic organisms, usually that are multicellular. What does this mean? The evaginated part is the opposite of invaginated. This means that it's going to, these structures that are gills, are going to extend out. They're going to extend outwards from the body. So they will be very much pronounced, very easily visible on the outside of the organism's body. In addition, they're going to have two surfaces, an outer surface and an inner surface, the gills that is. The outer surface of gills will be, since it's outside of the body really, that outer surface is constantly in contact with the environment. And the environment that aquatic organisms are within is H2O. So this is in constant contact with H2O. In contact, and that should say, with H2O. Whereas the inner surface, there's going to be an inner portion of this evaginated exchange surface known as gills. The inner surface is constantly in contact, not with the environment of the outside, but with the internal environment, specifically the circulatory system. In contact with the circulatory system. Remember, Respiration is all about combining the efficiencies of the circulatory and respiratory systems, utilizing and working together in order to do correct organismic respiration. Finally, these will also be characterized by a very large surface area. Again, the larger the surface area is, the more gas exchange possible. You're going to have a very large surface area at this gas exchange structure known as gills. Now, in terms of a general function of how gills and really any respiratory structure works, we have to understand a term known as ventilation. This is a big term to understand in respiration because ventilation is going to be defined as the specific mechanism to move H2O, in this situation at least. It could be H2O or it could even be air depending on where you're talking about, what organism you're talking about. Since we're talking about aquatic dwelling organisms, this is the mechanism to move H2O over the respiratory structure, making sure that H2O sort of goes right over the respiratory structure because the respiratory structure is going to then do something with this water. It's going to ventilate this water. It's going to do something in order to promote respiration. How does it do that? Well, what we need to understand is ventilation, specifically in fish, let's say. Generally, fish. Fish are going to ventilate. They ventilate via gills. What is this going to entail? What we have to understand about fish is that if a fish is in some sort of uh, amount of water, some area of water that's not moving, let's say, that it's the same area of water, and the water itself is still, it's not moving. 
We call that lentic water. That's not moving. It's not like a flowing river. It's just like a lake area, let's imagine. And it's not, it's just very still water. And if a fish stays within that area for a long enough time, what's actually going to happen is the following. The water that's in contact, the water in contact with the respiratory structure, which would be the gills, right? The outer surface is in contact with water. So the water will be in contact with the gills, and what's going to soon happen is that it will soon be completely depleted of oxygen because the gills will be constantly going over this water or interacting with this water in order to exchange or absorb or get this O2 to diffuse into the organism and into the circulatory system. So a fish has to beat this problem. This is the problem here, that you're depleting the oxygen that's all around you because the water is not moving. How do you defeat this problem if you are a fish? Well, what fish do is, and this is what you'll notice, that fish need to, and this is something that's innate to them, they need to continuously swim. They need to continue swimming. They can't just stay in one place. They really don't like to do that because if you continue swimming, you're continually, you're continuously going to places that have oxygen, right? Let's say you used up all the oxygen at place X. Why don't you just swim to place Y or Z or A, B, C, whatever it may be, and get the oxygen from the new place. And that's exactly what fish do. They need to continue swimming in order for the gills to pick up fresh new oxygen that's found within the water. For gills to pick up the oxygen that's dissolved in the water because gases dissolve really, really well in a water solvent environment. So that's what fish constantly do. And that's why when you take a fish out of water, what is it doing? It's constantly jumping up and down. Usually that's because it wants to continuously swim and trying to find some sort of water in which it can continue to get the oxygen in this ventilation process. In addition, structurally speaking, this is really about the function of how fish ventilate. Um, in order for ventilation to happen in fish, Fish must have a structure known as an operculum. Most fish, a lot of the fish that we are talking about are going to have this structure known as the operculum. Um, physically speaking, this is just going to be an external bony plate that covers the gills. So it's an external bony plate that's covering the gills. So that's structurally speaking what it is, but functionally it acts like a pump. It's a very good pump-like mechanism to it. And as a pump, the op operculum ensures that water is going to move through the mouth. So it pushes water. And this is what contains the oxygen. This is why you see fish open their mouth and close their mouth. Pushes water through the mouth and then across, where do you think? We have to move water over the respiratory structure. What's the respiratory structure? The gills. So it pushes water through the mouth and across gills, and this is all in order for gas exchange to effectively occur. And that's what we see in fish. This is why fish open their mouth and close their mouth if you look real close at them in a fish tank. So that covers our initial look at gills. In the next video and flowchart, we're going to be looking uh, a little bit deeper in the structure of gills and the function associated with it, specifically the countercurrent exchange system.